All right, a very good morning to you from a beautiful, sunny San Francisco. I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you are today. Uh, my name is Simon Thompson, and uh, joining you from uh, our Cisco Meraki headquarters, and very excited today to be uh, joined by Jonathan Evans, who's joining us from New Spring Church. Uh, so this is a really special webinar because this is going to give us an opportunity uh, not only to get a nice overview about Meraki, but also really to get beyond uh, what the marketing guy has to say and actually get to listen to a real customer for this product uh, and, and hear how it's being deployed and how it's helping to enhance the offering that New Spring Church has. Uh, so let's just do a quick audio check. Jonathan, are you, uh, are you online and with us? I'm here. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much, and thank you for taking some time to join us as well. I know the audience here is going to be very excited to hear what you have to say, uh, so we'll get right back to you uh, very shortly. Let me first of all just start off with a quick introduction to the agenda, and we'll, we'll sort of work our way through uh, these various steps. It's very straightforward. We'll start off with a quick introduction to Cisco Meraki. Anybody who is new to Meraki, obviously we want to make sure that you have some good familiarity before we move ahead. Uh, and then we'll have a look at some of the technology architecture and why we think cloud-managed IT is really the, the, the future, and it's a future we're delivering today. It's really a model that we think is, is very well set up for uh, new incoming technologies that we can consider uh, all to be managed centrally and, uh, and really gain great scale by doing that. And then, of course, we're going to get into the main thrust of today is to really talk to Jonathan about uh, New Spring Church. And, uh, and really bring this to life so that we're moving off of the, the theoretical slides that we have near the beginning uh, and getting into some real-world deployments, some of the challenges that typically are faced by real-world customers and see how Meraki can potentially help there. So we'll have an opportunity to have a look at the demo as well. Uh, I will take us through, uh, we'll have a look at some of the sort of generic components, if you like, of the Meraki dashboard interface, uh, but we'll also then take a good look at the, uh, the New Spring Church uh, deployment itself so that we can uh, you know, see, again, a real-world deployment uh, driven by our, our customer joining us today. And of course, we'll have a review of the various product families from Cisco Meraki, and then we'll wrap things up at the end with a question and answer session. So I would definitely encourage you to think uh, what kind of questions you might want to ask uh, both myself and also Jonathan, uh, our special guest today. And what we'll do, if you could put those into the Q&A panel in WebEx, what we'll do is uh, towards the end of the hour, uh, we'll revisit those, we'll take a look through, and we'll, uh, we'll share those questions with you all. So you can all contribute uh, to the fun that we're going to have in the next 60 minutes. Now, I'm very happy to announce that for IT professionals who are joining us for the first time today, you will qualify for a free Cisco Meraki MR33 uh, access point. This is a really cute little number. It's a, it's a perfectly sized and formed access point with remarkable power inside, so an 11 AC uh, access point and it comes together with a three-year cloud management license. And so the reason we do this, uh, we're obviously generous people, but also beyond that, we're very keen to get this equipment into your hands. We know that with Meraki and with a lot of technology, really it comes to life when we have time to uh, sit back, look at it and assess it in our own time and in our own networks. We want to give you the opportunity to do that because we're very confident that once you start using uh, the uh, the, the platform for yourself and the interface for yourself if in particular, uh, you're really going to fall in love with the way that we do things. So there are some eligibility requirements for this, and you'll find those on our website at the uh, site that's listed on the page there, so meraki.cisco.com forward slash free AP. Uh, so there are some uh, specific requirements around being an IT professional and so on. You can see those on the slide in front of you. Uh, but we do want to confirm your shipping address, so we really require you to uh, just reach out to us and uh, let us know which address we're going to uh, send that to, uh, and then we make sure we get that sent to the correct place. So here are the steps for claiming your free device. Uh, so please do review those eligibility requirements before you take any further steps. Connect with your Meraki rep, or just give us a call using contact details you should find in the reminder email you joined for today's webinar. And then just let us know your shipping address. And before you know it, you'll have a Meraki AP in your hands, and you can get started yourself. So let's have a quick introduction to Cisco Meraki. We like to think of ourselves as having a North Star, and that's around simplifying IT. We started life back in 2006 as a company with a very fresh new approach to wireless networking in particular. So our first products were wireless-based, and they came out of a research project that our founders undertook while they were students at MIT in the early 2000s. 
Uh, so I don't know if any of you were in IT at that time. It's quite a while ago now. I'm old enough to say that I was. It's slightly embarrassing. Uh, and I can tell you that at that time, there was no such thing as an enterprise access point, a true enterprise access point. Every single AP that you put up in your office space needed to be managed independently and separately. So obviously not very efficient and really not scalable at all. So the industry developed into having a centralized wireless controller, which is the common model that we still live with most prevalently today. And obviously that centralized the management for multiple access points, so obviously much more efficient from a scaling perspective. But you still had a physical box that you needed to maintain, you needed to put security patches on, you needed to host that in your own data center somewhere, uh, power it, license it, all the rest of it. So what we did instead as part of that research project was come up with a new and innovative way of centralizing management for wireless access points using software. And so when we put software somewhere other than our own location and our own server and our own data center, we start to use that term cloud. That's really what cloud means. And it's, so it's a service that is provided for our access and typically gives us very good scale. So we have a fantastic story around scaling at Meraki. We're actually able to support as many as 25,000 Meraki devices uh, through a single instance of the Meraki dashboard, which is really significant industry leading scale that we have at this point in time. And that's because we're not new to this anymore. We've been doing this for sort of 11 years now, and so a very solid story that we have to tell. And we've gone on and taken that model and expanded it to other areas of IT. So I started off by saying that we're all about simplifying IT, and I chose those words really carefully. We're not talking about networking alone anymore. That is the fundamental thrust of what we do at Meraki. It's what we have most experience in. We are part of Cisco, of course. Uh, but we're also looking at other areas of IT where we can bring this same centralized management and the same approach of simplicity and really change and evolve the experience for administrators who have typically finite time, finite resources, and may be responsible for managing multiple locations. So at this point in time, we have six product families in total, and, uh, and we'll come back to those a little bit later on, uh, but we want to really sort of move ahead here. I just want to give you a sense of that scale. It's a fantastic uh, story that we have at this point, 20, 250,000 plus customers and uh, around 1.3 million uh, Meraki networks in operation as I speak to you right now. So this is a company that has a lot of experience you can put a lot of faith in. Let's have a look at the architecture. It's an out-of-band one. So what we mean by that is the cloud is purely used as a centralization point for management of your devices. That's a fantastic development because it means that you can literally be anywhere in the world with any kind of device that has a browser on it. As long as you have an internet connection, you can both monitor and manage and configure and troubleshoot your Meraki network, whatever those components happen to be. So that is a really nice way of doing things. And it means that we keep that traffic flow very light between the cloud and the device itself. These kind of data points that we're sharing from a configuration perspective and then a monitoring perspective in the other direction, that's a very light data load. So it means that we do a, we have a, a great ability to scale, as I mentioned on the previous slide. I want to stress that user traffic, the stuff that you're generating as you do your work, your emails, your web traffic, your voice over IP, whatever it is, that is going direct to whatever its destination IP address is. We don't pass that through the cloud. That would really destroy our scaling message. Uh, altogether. So I just want to stress that that is a, what we call an out-of-band management solution. So I've talked about scale already, and we have plenty of customers who are operating some very large uh, networks at this point in our history, uh, so no problem at all with experience there. And we maintain multiple data centers that form this cloud that you access. Uh, so in the same kind of way, if you think about a service like Gmail, many of us use that, or some other cloud-based uh, email service, we don't really think about where the server is that we're connecting to or how many of them there are out there. All we know is we've got a rock solid service that is provided because of the re reliability that companies like Meraki uh, build into these cloud architectures. So you don't have to think about the cloud. That is really just something which is sitting there as a service running for you. And you can see there that we provide our customers with a four nines uh, uptime SLA, service level agreement for our cloud. Also in that reliability section, a very important point that a lot of people who are new to Meraki ask us, and that is what happens to my network if I'm unlucky enough to be disconnected from the cloud for whatever reason. I can't reach the cloud, so how's my equipment going to function? 
The good news here is that your network and your own equipment that you have on site does not rely on the cloud to operate. The reliance is around being able to pass configuration changes to be able to monitor what that device is doing. That's where the cloud is required, but it's not required to run a local area network. So if you do have some kind of internet outage, you have a problem actually reaching the cloud for whatever reason, uh, you're going to be able to continue to provide local area network service with no problem at all. So it's really just like having any other land-based solution. This is also a solution which has a very strong reputation around security. Our solutions are able to help customers comply with HIPAA, which is obviously very, very sensitive traffic and data here in the United States. It's uh, all relating to uh, healthcare if you're not from the US. Uh, and we're also PCI compliant at level one, the most stringent level of PCI compliance. And we're constantly looking at security. It is fundamental to our business. We've built everything around this cloud architecture. And so we're very fortunate to be part of a very large Cisco organization. And Cisco is second to none in this world when it comes to maintaining awareness of security uh, concerns and breaches and outbreaks. So for example, malware uh, news that we've had multiple times in the last 12 months, we jump on that very fast as a result of having a really good quality support from our friends at Cisco. We have a great website, which I definitely recommend you take a look at if you are new to Meraki, to just help bolster some of the stuff that I've gone through here in a little bit more detail. And you can find that at meraki.cisco.com forward slash trust. So this is a great integrated solution for new IT challenges. We have literally so many devices now around the world. Uh, I've watched this number, it's so funny, we now just say billions. We've given up just trying to keep count because there's just so many devices. Uh, you've probably got several with you today connected to your Wi-Fi network and it just keeps on growing over time. So we think about that, we think about how we're going to uh, handle those both from a network infrastructure perspective but also from a management perspective. If IT is giving devices to its employees or to its staff or students, then it's quite legitimate they may want to have some protection and control around those devices. So we provide tools to let you do that as well. We also have uh, application shaping and, uh, and the ability to be able to really truly monitor at a very high level uh, what is going on with our uh, traffic flows so that we can provide prioritization as appropriate. We also provide options for new business opportunities. We have some great APIs that let our customers build inter interesting new software solutions uh, that can pull data from the Meraki data set that you have uh, as you sign up to be a Meraki customer and can integrate that. So a good example of that would be in retail uh, where you can take uh, location-based information and you can integrate that potentially with a, a customer management database to really provide nice tailored service for your customers. And all of this stuff just comes straight out of the box. We don't charge on a feature basis at Meraki, so you have really access to a very broad range of capabilities from the get-go. One of the other things we're very well known for is feature velocity. So our engineers are continually looking at the market dynamics, looking at feedback that you, our customers, give to us, and making sure that we're staying on top of those in terms of, uh, of real-world features that you can take advantage of. So these are just some examples. We have obviously, this is not exhaustive by any means. We would need a much bigger page to do that. Um, but what we want to try to illustrate for you here is that when you make a decision to go with Meraki, you are simply buying a product at a point in time. Its capabilities are going to increase over the duration of your relationship with Meraki because we're constantly coming up with new uh, and innovative ways to use this technology to help make your life easier. Okay, so at this point in time, I'd like to introduce uh, Jonathan a little bit more properly. So, uh, Jonathan, thank you again for joining us today. We really appreciate having you here. Uh, and I'd love if you could just give us a quick introduction to, uh, to you, who you are, and uh, what you do today, and, uh, and really what your journeys look like to get to uh, where you are as well. Yeah, so uh, I lead the IT team here at New Spring Church. We, uh, we're a church with uh, campuses kind of all over the state of South Carolina. And we have a total of seven people in our IT team. Uh, I have an amazing team. Uh, you know, even pulling off what we did with Meraki uh, would not have been possible without them. But uh, you know, we we kind of came from a a background of you know, before we looked into Meraki, we had from a network perspective, you know, three different, uh, much more complex you know, systems when it came to firewalls and switching and wireless. 
and uh, you know, over the really over the past few years, I've been kind of intrigued by by Meraki, but uh, for whatever reason, it hasn't hasn't been a fit for us. But uh, you know, as we continue to push looking at it, you know, really really heavily into the uh, the fall of last year. It, it really it really started to make sense for us to consider uh, going all in with Meraki. Uh, we we had uh, we had you know specialists on our team that uh, that really really only one person you know knew how to manage an individual piece of the network really well, uh, whether that be firewalls or wireless or, or switching and and uh, you know Meraki. Meraki was a, a a platform that that literally anybody anybody can can manage, and uh, you know I, I say that saying that I'm I'm not a I'm not a high level technical expert, uh, and I you know kind of jokingly say it's it's so easy that uh, that I can that I can do it. Um, you know I I really do believe that you know anybody with basic IT experience can can manage uh, almost any function related to the network with Meraki. Great. Um, uh, this picture we're looking at right now. This is—is is this the main church uh, within your group? Uh, the picture that's on the screen is our is our main campus. That's correct. Okay. And and let's just move on to the next slide because I think we have some yeah. interesting stats here. Yeah. Uh, so you can give us a little more background on New Spring Church itself. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, New Spring has has been around for uh, 18 years and. Uh, you know, just like just like almost every organization today, we are heavily dependent on a uh, well-functioning network at every location. Uh, from you know, we our our services are actually streamed to each location. We offer guest Wi-Fi, so there's there's many different devices connecting. Uh, you know, on a on a typical, if we look at uh, and we could possibly we can probably show that slide when we get into our dashboard, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, Meraki uh, has a has an overall summary of your entire network, and on a weekly basis, there's typically like 8,000 unique clients that are connecting on a week. Uh, if you expand that out to monthly, it's almost 13,000. So it's lots of different devices coming in touch with our network, and from a you know specifically even on the on the wireless side, um, you know we were we were facing a, a lot of challenges when it came to you know performance and uh, reliability. Even when it came to you know, to some firmware issues we were having with the previous vendor, and uh, you know, I, on the other side of it, uh, I now I now trust wireless for even more critical type you know situations. Whereas, you know, there was there was not a lot of trust in our uh, ability to provide consistent wireless before. And wireless is is what you would consider to be your primary connection, and and I'm assuming. Uh, and, and let me just back up just a little bit here. These 14 locations are these all uh, churches, or do you have different types of buildings and and layouts as well? No. So these are these are all churches, and mm -hmm. uh, some of those locations even um, most most of them are buildings we actually own and and are in 100% of the time. Some of these locations are even uh, schools or convention centers that we actually uh, bring equipment in and out of every week. Mm -hmm. uh, we even have uh, in, in some of these schools we have a uh, a portable. It's actually a portable MX65W solution that that runs on a uh, Verizon modem that they bring in and out of the facility every week. That that handles our uh, application we use to manage uh, uh, kids actually checking into room and keeping up with the, you know where each kid is and all that stuff. So we we. Uh, we have a, uh, you know, I guess, I guess it's it's a different uh, variety of, of different setups in those. Right, right. So different different physical layouts, uh, diff different challenges, I guess, for that reason. But but uh, these this very large number of unique clients. Your, uh, I'm I'm going to guess here that you're talking about both your own devices, but also of course your many guests who come along. That's uh, correct. That's correct. And, yeah. So so for for guests guest services, uh, do you have do you have any other kind of um, uh, categories, if you like, uh, besides sort of employees of, of New Spring and and the uh, and, and the, the clients who come in. Uh, category the categories of devices would really between would be between those two. It's uh, yeah. you know, internal uh, you know, New Spring owned devices, and uh, you know it, it, almost every facility we have we have open you know open guest Wi-Fi and 
it's uh, quite a quite a bit of people connect to it. Um, it's it's uh, again, it's just something we try to provide as a service because mm -hmm. uh, the majority of times, you know, now in the church world, um, you know, when uh, if if you ask someone to to reference something in a Bible or something like that, they're typically pulling out their phone and doing that. Right. Right. Uh, so it's it's uh, again more you know we're we're definitely a uh, you know a technology heavy church so that's that's uh, right. that's going to uh, you know, follow in the in the people that are coming typically too. It's it's really amazing how technology has has adapted the way that so many of us in whatever walk of life whatever we're doing uh, like you said pulling our phones out to to, to get an answer <laughs> to a problem to, to accomplish anything up. yeah. That we're 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 very much unified as a as a as a populace in that way. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And, and you know, to be to be honest, you know, talking about wireless, wireless was was actually the uh, the the thing that was originally the challenge we were looking to solve. We we actually did not intend on uh, originally replacing switching and firewalls too, but uh, after after digging into it further, it just started to make sense. To, to do the whole the whole package together. Right, and and that's the next step. So I, I'd like to have a look at uh, let, let's again sort of look at a little bit of history here and think about some of the challenges that you were experiencing. Uh, if you could just kind of walk us through those for the for the different types of of infrastructure as well as you just referred to there. Yep. So uh, you know we had uh, from a switching standpoint, we were using uh, the traditional Cisco Catalyst uh, switches. Which again, we we really didn't have any functional problems uh, with those. They performed great, uh, but again, it was depending on what we were trying to do. It was a it was more of a specialized skill set that uh, that somebody you know that a, a single person on our team uh, managed and, and dealt with. And for for firewalls, we we used Fortinet. Uh, they, their their web interface is, is 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 pretty good too. But again, it was it's not as not as simple as Meraki, and uh, so those those two packages were there. But on the on, on the wireless side, uh, we came from we came from Ruckus Wireless, and uh, you know it, it's uh, I'm not trying to necessarily bash a competing product or anything, but you know we, we just had a good bit of challenges in, in our environment that that we were never able to resolve, and uh, so we. We, we really, again, we, we just started looking down the path of wireless, uh, mainly because we were trying to solve a challenge of, of, of constantly battling wireless performance issues that, uh, that we just could never figure out, you know, why they were happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so anyway, you know, as we, you know, as we, as we looked at it, uh, it, uh, you know, we discovered the trial program. Uh, we did webinars similar to this one, and uh, that's that's what really you know sold us on it. We actually converted a entire uh, location over to you know the full stack of Meraki gear. Uh, so we we you know in in a in a production setting we uh, we replaced all the gear and, and operated that way for for uh, for a couple months and. You know the the experience and the ease of of even transitioning it. You know we we went into installing the trial gear. You know thinking it would be a you know it, it would be a challenge, but it, it we got it. You know we even got the the trial gear installed and set up even you know, even quicker and easier than we thought we would. So, right, and, so, and some of those that, that, there's a couple of interesting things there. I mean you 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 mentioned about sort of the experience of, of sort of switching this stuff on and starting to work with it for the first time. But I also note here on the slide right in the middle, hard to avoid, uh, it says here specialized skill sets and, and resistance to change. So uh, maybe it was maybe universally not quite, the, the folks weren't quite ready for it. I mean, how, how did that actually play out for you? Yeah, and I'm, you know, I, I, I mentioned that, you know, I've, I've kind of been, I was intrigued, you know, personally with, with Meraki for, for several years. Um, but you know, I, I'm I'm also uh, the type of person where I, I want I want my whole team's buy-in if we're moving in a direction I want it to be something they want to do too. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm uh, you know, I love the idea of completely cloud managed and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and, and something easy enough to where I could do. But uh, you know, but also uh, you know, part of what we had was 
was kind of was kind of working well, and there was there was some. Uh, I, I think the you know really to to get to get everybody completely on board, it really just took the trial. And mm-hmm. once we once we did that, uh, you know we we unanimously agree as a team that it, it would be a good fit for us. Well, that's um, of course there, why. That, sorry, sorry, Job. That, that's of course why we're so keen to get equipment into people's hands because you know they, they we can talk about this stuff all day. And and I do know, uh, having been there myself, that that. The folks who are responsible for networks feel a deep sense of responsibility to providing, mm-hmm. you know, robust service, and they're often a little conservative-minded. I'm sure they wouldn't mind admitting that in many cases, because yeah. that gives them that sense of security that they they haven't messed yeah. with things, so they they're, they're going to be safe there. Yeah, but, and I and I think also, you know, if you have if if uh, you haven't looked at Meraki in a while, I mean, things things change a lot. You know, they mm-hmm. just a few slides before you were talking about how things progress. And, you know, I know, you know, one person, even when we looked at it, you know, several years ago, one person on my team was concerned about the security offerings that were there. And a lot of those have been beefed up. And, you know, we, we were, uh, we were also uh, worried about, uh, you know, at, at the time, so we were looking at this heavily in, in October, some of the, uh, some of the firewall models, at least on the, the upper end side, side were, were, were kind of outdated. But but luckily timing worked out that uh, new devices were released in the in the late fall that uh, that were kind of a perfect fit for for what our needs were. Uh, but the, the, the cool thing is even though the older devices from a software perspective still work the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean that that's the thing. It's great. basically the hardware is almost almost becomes invisible at, at yeah. some point because you're really just focused on that uh, experience. So. So really, that I think that brings us on to the the way that you were able to sort of overcome some of these challenges as you went through. You, you mentioned that you started with uh, with the webinars there. Uh, tell us about this rip and replace. That that sounds uh, that does sound quick. Yeah. So uh, we were so we we were working on kind of closing the the deal associated with with moving to Rock to Meraki towards the end of the year, and uh, we. Uh, we had we had a deadline we had to meet to avoid paying a uh, annual maintenance renewal that was going to happen in, uh, in you know towards the beginning of February of this year. So uh, you know we were trying to aggressively you know aggressively roll everything out, and uh, so we we uh, we received the gear uh, on I think actually our first day back in the office in January this year. And uh, you know, spent, we spent about a week or so getting getting everything you know unboxed and you know in, in uh, divided up into what's going where. But uh, when we were ready to start installing and configuring, uh, we uh, from the first day to the last day, it was it was ten days to replace uh, you know every bit of our uh, Cisco Fortinet and Ruckus Wireless at every location. Oh. With with Meraki, including our kind of central you know, data center. That is certainly impressive, and, and that's that presumably means a lot of people standing up on ladders, putting a, a P top on oh, yeah, and yeah. all the rest of it. So it's yeah, not, all, not all of that too. Yeah, that's cool. And then and so once the stuff is in, then you 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 had your hearts and minds of your IT team kind of uh, won over at that point. They they sort of fell in love with it as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think we are you know as a team, we're we're all. Uh, you know, very happy with 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 where we are. Um, you know, again, even even simple things that uh, even simple things like a VLAN change, which you know technically you know anybody can anybody in IT can can learn how to do that. But we uh, you know on a, on a Cisco or whatever. But we we traditionally just kept that to the to the Cisco person, mm-hmm. and you know now that is so easy that just anybody you know anybody can can log into a website and do a VLAN change or bounce a port or uh, you know, see what's going on. Uh, so that just yeah. the 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 access and view that, that we're able to, to give people. Uh, you know, we we've even been able to open up. Uh, so we work we work kind of in conjunction with uh with we have a production team here that uh, you know they handle a lot of the the lights and the cameras and all that kind of stuff and, and as well as the. Uh, as well as the uh, the live stream, you know, to to the other mm-hmm. campuses, mm-hmm. we provide we provide network infrastructure to make that happen. 
but we're also able to, you know, give them view only access into Meraki and they can they can see what's going on on the network themselves and see how things are, are, are working and uh, you know, if they need to if they need to test the device, they can see that it fits in the right VLAN or in their you know production specific VLAN. Right. So it's it's just the the accessibility of that information and how uh, you know even even people that don't live truly in the IT world can even you know understand and use it to troubleshoot. Right. Them. Right. And I, you've said that so well because that was I think that was when I think back to when I joined Meraki, uh, that was the thing that really attracted me was that we we'd taken a technology that was traditionally associated with a, a sort of ugly command lines and having to learn a whole bunch of commands and try and remember them all and it just really a headache just trying to get the vital information out of the network and it was there but it was just it just required too much effort and expertise to be able to retrieve it. Now you're talking about being able to have less technical people who have a fundamental understanding of how networks operate being able to sort of take some uh, to derive some benefit from this infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, so the next slide here, I think we get into the real sort of detail exactly of what you have here, and it's pretty broad. So um, uh, we talked about the, the APs. Uh, you have everything connected together with uh, with Meraki switches as well. Uh, that's correct. Uh, yep, and, and so Systems Manager, tell us how you use that in practice. So this is the product that we use for managing endpoints, the actual devices like smartphones, tablets, and so yeah. on. Uh, how do you actually use that in your own deployments? Yeah, so so right now we uh, we minimally use Systems Manager. Um, our our only actual in production use case of it is uh, is PCs, um, and that's that's mainly in a deploying Wi-Fi and uh, and information gathering standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't we don't really have a lot of requirements on that, that, that we need to manage on those right now. Right. Uh, we we intend on on rolling out uh, rolling out uh, iOS and Android management uh, later this fall as we do a uh, as we do a device upgrade. Uh, we have we have a corporate managed cell plan and, and all the device upgrades will happen around that time. So just from a timing standpoint and communication flow, mm -hmm. we're we're planning on rolling it out that then. Okay. And and we've got virtual MX here as well, which uh which probably will need a little bit of explanation for for our audience. Um yeah. that, that, uh do you want to go ahead and have a go at that? Tell us how you're using it yourself. Uh yep. So the the virtual MX was was another uh you know big you know, big selling point that kind of pushed us over the edge to to go for the the all-in Meraki solution. Uh, you know, we we have also kind of been in the process of of migrating you know our, our you know, core server infrastructure to Microsoft Azure, and uh, you know had been working towards you know making the you know all the VPN connections and all that stuff work with our current. Uh, with our current uh, you know, Fortinet products, and we uh, we definitely spent some money on, on consultants to help help make that work. And it, it, it was not a it was not an, an easy process. And when we when we started the, the trial process, Meraki actually didn't have a VMX for Azure. They only had one for AWS. So mm -hmm. so again, the the timing of everything just kind of worked out for us because we. Uh, that was something that, that that was needed, and we actually we actually got uh, I can't remember if it was actually beta or not, but it was either the first day the beta was available or the first day it became generally available. One of those two, yep. uh, we uh, we we got a a VMX provision for us in a trial setting, and uh, there was there was some challenges to work through considering it had just launched and some of the documentation was kind of fuzzy. But uh, it looks like all of that's kind of been been cleared up, and it's pretty straightforward. But it, you know, either way, it was it was relatively simple to get going, and you know, now our our connection to uh, uh, to, to Azure is 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 managed in the same way as we would you know a connection to another site we have. Right. Um, we have the same uh, you know interface that we use in Meraki to see what kind of you know what the traffic levels are like going over that VPN tunnel and. Uh, so it, that was a very helpful product for us. Yeah, and and what kind of just just to help uh, the audience, what kind of services are you have you migrated to these sort of cloud infrastructures that you're accessing through this? 
Uh, yeah, so I mean, for us, we uh, are kind of our core application uh, is a it's a it's a church management system called uh, Rock RMS. It's a uh, so it's a Windows Server Microsoft SQL based application, mm -hmm. and we were we were previously hosting that in house, and uh, you know even kind of jumping back from a from an overall you know network design for us we had we had previously and all these kind of things were happening at the same time we had been a uh, we had an MPLS network to every location all internet had to flow through our central our central hub. But we, we had been gradually moving to more and more cloud-based services, so it was it was also making sense to to move those connections at every location just directly to the internet. And we wanted to remove the dependency on one you know on one location to, to keep everything running. So uh, so we started just trying to push basically anything that was critical to us uh, you know outside of this outside of this location. Um, but you know even things like uh, you, know, you know AD domain services and uh, you know, almost, almost, you know, all of the critical server functions that we have. Mm -hmm. Really interesting to hear that because uh, obviously we're <laughs> sitting, sitting here and uh, and creating uh, stories and and uh, documentation around uh, products like this. We're obviously anticipating how people are using it. It's fascinating to hear the hear it in your own words, um, yeah. the, the kind of motivations that are, that are sending you in this direction. And, and it's not uncommon at all. It's a, it's a very strong growing trend at this point in time yeah. to, uh, to offload those. Uh, those. Yeah. So the idea of a, having a locally hosted data center is sort of slowly fading, yeah. I think, into the That's process. right. That's right. And hey, just to mention too, we're using one in both Azure and Amazon. So we have, right. we actually have both, both variants. Super high reliability there. <laughs> That's great. Um, the, the security appliances. Uh, th this is a this is a box for those who are who are new to these. Um, it's really a box that has so many personalities. It's it is fundamentally described as a security appliance. Uh, so its main job is protecting the the local area network that sits behind it. Uh, so it often gets described as a firewall, although it has so many more security features than just a firewall alone. But the other interesting area is how it helps sites to connect together. Uh, and Jonathan, I'm, I'm assuming that you're also using it in that capacity as well. Uh, that's that's correct. So uh, the EMX security appliances are managing our VPN connections between sites, uh, as well as to the uh, the virtual EMXs. Mm -hmm. And then we have a new kit on the block here, which uh, will be new for many people, and that's Meraki Insight, something which we just announced and uh, have got going in the last sort of month or two. Uh, so have you had your ch a chance to have a look at that yourself at this point? Uh, yeah, we we have uh, shortly after it was released, we uh, we were added to the beta group, and uh, you know it it uh, it does it does at the time. I, don't, I really don't know on the current, but at the time it required you to also run in beta firmware on the MX devices, mm -hmm. which uh, you know in general we have found uh, you know, it, if an issue does come up with uh, with a support type thing with with Meraki and this. Is rare, but a lot of times they they will even suggest beta. But but beta with Meraki, uh, in, in our experience at least, doesn't necessarily mean you know beta in the traditional sense. It's it's been it's typically been highly stable still. So I mean we we've been running in the in the beta firmware that was required on some of these to get the the Meraki insight, and uh, you know it, it's definitely a it's definitely a pretty cool experience. Uh, we we had a product. Prior to the migration to to Meraki, that, that we even could have kept, but we decided to phase out as as part of Meraki. Because Meraki in itself already provided some of this, that, that, that gave us a little bit of what Meraki Insight does. So, uh, it, and it basically just gives you a you know indicator of how well certain you know cloud based you know applications are performing from that site, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so, I mean, it's depending on you know how much you need to guarantee that certain applications or have have data around how specific applications are performing. Uh, that's a that's a pretty cool pretty cool tool. Very nice. Uh, okay, so we'll get into a demo in just a few moments because uh, I'm I'm looking at the time here and the conversation is so interesting that uh, the clock is ticking <laughs> super fast. Uh, so that, that often happens to me. I don't know why. Uh, 
So let's just, uh, for, the, for our audience again, let's turn, just bring it to life a little bit. We've got a great picture here. I'm guessing this is your main site. And, and could you just maybe just walk us through how the experience has been transformed as a result of, uh, of introducing Meraki into your environment? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, you know, like I said, I mean, one of the, one of the biggest, probably one of the biggest things is, is being able to provide reliable, uh, consistent wireless performance. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the, and this is one of the bullet points on here that I think I had mentioned in a, in a previous conversation is uh, when asking, you know, what are, what are new things that we're doing since we're doing this? Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're rolling out uh, really over the next few months a, a project where, uh, you know, we're going to be doing a good bit of streaming content in some of our, our kids' rooms at each campus that uh, that we're actually doing wirelessly um, and you know going to depend on it for you know production you know production type use but uh, we trust the wireless network enough to handle that where we are now mm -hmm. whereas before you know the the idea of doing something like that would 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 be uh, would not be something we would consider right okay uh, all right so let's have a look at the the actual physical deployment itself just a quick sneak peek before we get into the demo this is uh, helping helping our audience sort of see just how dispersed physically uh, that you are between these different locations. Clearly, you don't want to be putting somebody in a truck to uh, to head off to some of these more remote uh, locations. Um, uh, but it all looks very healthy in this one. It's all green here. It's good. <laughs> okay, let's get into the uh, into the demo. I'm going to switch across to my web browser and uh, we'll take a look at the Meraki dashboard. Uh, it looks like. Yes, we have good security features here that log us out after a period of time. So just let me just log back in again here. And uh, before we get specifically to New Spring Church, I want to just show you a couple of very high-level uh, overviews for Meraki. This is a special demo page. Don't worry about that little uh, note on there. Uh, this is one we build just for demo purposes. So it's actually now look at that. It, this is always this always happens to me. I said 1.3 million. We've just now ticked over into 1.4 million active networks just since last week. Uh, around the world, so this is uh, it's always very exciting to see, and the you know the growth of Meraki has been wonderful to watch. You can see the the breadth of our uh, deployments right around the world. Uh, they really does uh, reach right to all four corners. So, uh, very good story there. If we just dive in uh, super quickly, I'm going to show you very high level for uh, Meraki's own headquarters, and then we'll look at the New Spring environment as well. Uh, as a network administrator, you're typically going to be seeing something that looks like this when you start out, and that's looking at your client devices. So you have a lot of flexibility in this interface. One of the key things I want to point out is how you have multiple different IT components appearing down the left-hand side here. And so the point we're trying to aim for here is this fairly straightforward, intuitive, uh, graphical user interface that really is a one-stop for most of your IT infrastructure. So you log in one time, and you have a common look and feel uh, for all these different infrastructure types. And that's clearly going to be a time saver uh, over time. Uh, so here we have a list of clients, lots and lots of traffic, 28 and a half terabytes of traffic on our network in the past week. So we're obviously running 100% Meraki. We're operating uh, four different floors within uh, our building at uh, headquarters in SF. Uh, so very busy environment there. And so jumping around, you can see, for example, we can easily do a search. I can go in here and say, just show me the iPhones. Uh, I can see what operating systems are available to me as well. So I can say Windows and just show me the ones that are online right now. So I've got 336. You can see we have both wired and wireless clients there. Up here we have uh, a pie chart showing us the applications that are in use on our network. And if I tap on that, I get this nice, easy, user-friendly uh, drop down. I don't need to be an IT guru to understand this. It's all plain English. Uh, we have a lot of high bandwidth applications here. So we're, so we're producing a lot of media here at uh, headquarters. Uh, so there's no surprise that there's a lot of sort of high bandwidth streaming applications here. And obviously we can then start to dive in. So let's say YouTube, we pick on that one. Just click on YouTube and here are all the clients using YouTube. So we have some wallboards around our location uh, where they are uh, streaming certain types of YouTube traffic. We have a lot of YouTube videos ourselves. Uh, so a lot of ver valuable information for our employees to look at while they're doing their job. Now let's jump across to NewSpring, uh, and we'll, we start off here at a pretty high level. So we're looking at uh, an organizational overview. Let me just hide that for a sec, and if I zoom out, it uh, looks like it's not 100% green today, but often what you find is that it just comes down to just one or two devices, 
that have some kind of a challenge, and it may well be delivered. It might be that you've disconnected something for an upgrade. Jonathan, I'm sure you can uh, you can explain some of this, maybe not. Yeah. So so again, this is kind of what I mentioned before. We have uh, we have a few different locations that that have. Uh, basically, it's it's uh, it's cases of equipment that are brought in and plugged up for that uh, you know for the time we're in that building. Yeah. So that's that's what all of those all of those red networks are. Uh, we actually have a we actually have a, a network tag there that filters those out that you can mm -hmm. uh, that you can drop those. Uh, we uh, the the map screenshot that you had on the previous slide show we may have we may have cheated to make. <laughs> um, the because uh, for us again, don't, there's only one time a week, you know, one or two times a week that all of them are are green, and yeah. uh, you know those, those are even those red ones are dependent on cellular connectivity, uh, which typically shows as yellow as well. So well, let, let's all be very honest with each other here. There's it's a very rare network in this world that has a hundred percent green, <laughs> uh, and of course we're going to feel a bit alarmed if uh, if we see red stuff. But uh, you know that that's that's good. It proves that we're not. Uh, uh, we're not making this stuff up. If we jump into, uh, I'm guessing that Sen is your central. Is that would that be a that's good? A, that's our kind of main location. That's All right. right. Let's let's jump into that uh, and have a look at that in slightly more detail. Uh, so same view as I showed you a moment ago from Rocky HQ, and here is your own list. Quite a large number of devices there as well. Let's look at the last uh, seven days there. And you can see the sort of traffic profile for each of the different days of the week. Uh, and so, you know, we have typically a peak every single day. It's very common uh, to, to have, and a lot of client devices here. So this is again another very busy environment uh, with a lot of traffic. Wow, you've got more traffic than we have. That's incredible. <laughs> Thirty-seven terabytes of uh, of data uh, passing around your different locations. That's that's awesome. Uh, as far as your own breakdown is concerned, again, it's, it's going to be very similar. Almost any network you point this tool at. You are going to see things like uh, if you're using sort of file servers, you're using cloud-based services, uh, you're using any kind of streaming media, you're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff showing up in the list here. So no surprise uh, with any of the things that we see here. Um, if we go back to the uh, to the clients page, let's just hide this again. And uh, maybe let's just see if we can identify a client that we can have a just slightly closer look at. Uh, Jonathan, you don't know if you've got any favorites you like to bring up here? Uh, you can, uh, I mean, really, you can just pick on one of those. Uh, yeah. On here is fine. Okay, so let's jump into one of these clients here. This is connected to a switch port, and we know that because of this icon here. Uh, we get a, a integration with Google Maps built right in, so we can see the physical location and where it sits uh, in terms of the sort of broader environment. So again, very, very useful. And then you can get into real information that pertains just to this specific device. So. There are some great troubleshooting tools we're very proud of here at Meraki, like the ability to run a packet capture. I can literally, sitting here in SF with Jonathan's permission, I can literally run a packet capture on a device that is online and live right now. So if I was troubleshooting this device, I would be able to get a Wireshark download. This is the same stuff that network engineers do right around the world, but now I don't have to be physically present. So the reality and the practical day-to-day capability of being able to manage multiple locations is really uh, enhanced with this kind of technology. So uh, down the left-hand side, we can see the different components that uh, that are in use in this environment. So if we take a very quick look at uh, the security appliance, for example. So here is that main firewall for that location. We can see it has dual internet uplinks, so a nice highly redundant setup that you've got here. Uh, are you running SD-WAN as well, Jonathan, in this case? Uh, we we are, yes. Yeah. So that means that we have sites connected with uh, VPNs, and we're able to make intelligent decisions about uh, which pathways should be used for different types of traffic. And that is uh, something which SD-WAN really helps a lot with. It enables us to look beyond those expensive private circuits to being able to use just regular VPN over Internet. It's highly secure but it's also uh, very flexible with SD-WAN. So if we do suddenly get degradation on WAN 1, for example, uh, we can just easily uh, flip across to WAN 2. Yeah, and one, one thing I'll mention on this page, too, a feature mm -hmm. that we really liked a lot, you know, if you scroll down and look at the bottom left, uh, you notice that there's a cellular modem connected ah, to yes. yep. we, we made We made actually the decision to put a, a cell modem connected to every, to every MX. 
uh, you know, so the, the cool thing is built in to, you know, to the firewall, you have the ability to fill over to provide basic connectivity, um, you know, to a site in the event of, uh, of WAN getting disconnected. Uh, this is the only site we actually have dual WAN. Every other site we have a we have a single a single WAN connection, but right. uh, but we always do the uh, cellular backup, and that's that's uh, that's been pretty helpful. E even though you know the speeds aren't going to be that great, but it gives you as IT the ability to kind of remotely see what's going on. Um, and, and you know some of these, you know, we use this in those same portable scenarios where we're dependent completely on cellular connectivity. And even from this interface, we can remotely run a speed test, you know, on the, you know, you know, on the appliance just to see what kind of throughput to the internet it's getting, which it, which is just another pretty helpful feature. Right, um, and and it's it's wonderful to have that capability in there as well. You've got basically tertiary backup here with with cellular as well, uh, if you do re rely if you do require that. So you've always got that additional level of security there. There is so much that I would love to be able to show everybody on the call today, and uh, the time is always a, a challenge for us here. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to guess that many of you on the call would love to see more of this. And we have plenty of webinars where we go through different products within the family and spend a little bit more time looking at the capabilities there. Uh, I think probably what's best with the, with the minutes that we have remaining now is if I just wrap things up on the slides and we'll just have a look at the questions that have come in, make sure that we give Jonathan a chance to talk about those. Uh, it looks like we have a little plug going on here. Jonathan, help us out here. Yeah, so I was just going to mention, you know, especially, especially if there's any other churches in attendance, um, there is a uh, Church IT Network National Conference this fall that uh, is really just a conference uh, run by, you know, IT professionals from churches. Uh, you know, most of the content is actually driven by attendees. But it's just a chance to uh, get together with other churches that are, uh, you know, doing uh, you know, doing technology, you know, just like you, and uh, share experiences and, and learn from each other. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I plan on doing a detailed session as well about our transition to Meraki at that event. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's wonderful. Thank you. And uh, let's just move on now and look at the the questions that have come in. Uh, I, I want to say before we even start doing the questions, we have a lot of them, and I'm super grateful to you all for uh, for sending those to us. Uh, we're, there's no way we're going to get through them all uh, in a, in the couple of minutes we have remaining, and I, I it's my fault. That's my bad. But what I what I absolutely would love to do is uh, take a look through those questions and make sure that we're uh, getting some responses back to individuals uh, subsequently. So we'll certainly do our best to do that. And Jonathan, we, we'd love it if you could sort of help us out with some of those. Uh, if we're not able to cover them in the next couple of minutes. Okay. Uh, so let's have a look at a couple of these. Uh, first of all, I think we answered this one already. You're providing uh, guest Wi-Fi to the congregation, so that's awesome. Uh, do you have anything sort of special in terms of device types, uh, anything unique like IoT devices or cameras or anything else like that in your deployments? Uh, we, I mean, we do have we do have cameras. We have a, a good bit of access access cameras. Um, you know, I'm not sure specifically what what they're looking for in that question, but yeah, uh, you know, we we have a variety of devices. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. What would you say was the the greatest challenge that you experience typically on your on your network with in relation to church services? So, what kind of uh, you know stresses can 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 come up for your network in those situations? Uh, I mean, at, at the you know probably at the uh, you know worst case scenario. I mean, for us. If if a if the network is completely down, you know, at a campus, we are, you know, for one, we're unable to actually, uh, you know, straight. So we we have somebody that speaks at our main location, and that's broadcast to the others. So they they're unable to receive that in a live manner, as well as uh, you know, just our all the applications we use, like the application I mentioned, how we you know track what uh, what kids are in what room. So even just from a safety standpoint of keeping up with uh, the kids that have been entrusted to our care during that time. So it's mm -hmm. you know, having a you know, you know, consistently working network is, is extremely important. Yeah, absolutely. It goes without question. Uh, so what kind of um, tools did you use? When you, were, when you were looking at your wireless access point deployment, obviously we talked earlier about the fact that you have different physical setups. How did you go about establishing uh, your, your best design for your Wi-Fi? 
Yeah, so we uh, we actually had a uh, you know had someone help do site surveys at uh, at two of our locations um, to almost help us you know help teach us how to how to do it well, and uh, and we we have done that even in the past with with previous platforms, but uh, just you know just to kind of make sure we did it right with you know with Meraki we we did that again. Um, and our, our 10 day rip and replace was pretty much a one to one wireless AP replacement. We're actually about to start the process of, of going around doing site surveys again to, to make sure they're still in the right place for, uh, you know, for, for optimal performance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think we just have time for, sadly, for just one more question here. Uh, so let me just have a look and see, uh, see if I can find a real juicy one. Um, Okay, so I, I guess the, the question here would be sort of what what's next? What uh, what what additional uh, sort of challenges do you see coming up that you, you want to sort of look to address uh, as you take your IT forwards? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, in general, it's a uh, good question. Yeah, you know, the, the the thing that I'm always trying to focus on is ultimately what led me to Meraki is is simplicity. Uh, you know, we've We've and I, I didn't mention this early on, but uh, you know one of the you know one of the other things that kind of pushed us to Meraki or just a, in, in just a simpler approach to network is uh, we had uh, we actually had uh, you know two people within a span of you know four or five months that that, that were both on our help desk uh, that had left uh, that decided to leave and you know all for good reasons, but. Uh, we actually kind of decided that with some of the simpl simplifying efforts we had already been doing, and with a with a you know push forward towards Meraki, that we would basically just try to absorb the work without without a uh, you, know, you know replacing those people, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the, this focus on on simplicity that 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 really again you know, outside of just Meraki that our team's been been chasing for for a few years. Has really just enabled our team to to remain lean and and be able to accomplish things. So, I mean, yeah. I would say I, I I don't have a specific thing, but for for me, it's it's always you know don't 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 always go for the most complex you know technology solution. Just go for the simplest option that that serves what you need. That's a really nice way to to wrap things up, I think, because because it is such an important focus for us, and we know that that applies to every organization type out there. We all have finite resources we have to try to uh, do things with. So really appreciate that. Um, we don't have time to look at the product families, but they're all on our website. That's the good news, meraki.com, super easy. And uh, do please keep in touch with us. We want to get that gear into your hands. We have had over 700 attendees on this webinar. I'm super grateful to you all for taking time out of your day. Uh, I think we found it very interesting talking to Jonathan, which is why we've run out of time. Uh, so Jonathan, I'd like to just once again, thank you very much again for being a guest with us today. Uh, any closing comments you have for the for the audience? Uh, thanks for having me, and glad you guys joined. And if I could ever do anything for you, just feel free to to reach out. You can actually find uh, contact info for me on our website. Beautiful. That's a good note to end it on. Thank yeah. you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we do look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Bye bye okay. for now. Thanks.